Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. The Logic 10.4.5 update just came out, and in this video, I'll demonstrate the main new features. So this isn't a drastic update like the 10.4.0 update was, but there's some pretty cool new features. If you watched the 2019 Apple Developers Conference last week, you probably saw the new Mac Pro that'll be released this fall, and during that presentation, David Earl, who's known on YouTube as SF Logic Ninja, um, he now works for Apple, and he demonstrated how you could use up to a thousand tracks in Logic. So this works for audio, software instruments, external MIDI, and aux tracks. So let's try this out. I'll create a thousand audio tracks. And now I'll create a thousand software instrument tracks. Now obviously this is a ridiculous amount of tracks, and really only people who do film scoring and orchestral arrangements in Logic are even going to get close to this. There's also a new option under Preferences, Display, and then click the Tracks tab, and this will show you the track or bar number while scrolling. So this will be really helpful to navigate all of these new tracks. Now personally, a thousand tracks isn't a big deal to me, but for film scoring and really large projects like film audio as well, where you've got dozens of channels of audio, dialogue, sound effects, and music, the previous limit of, what I think it was 256, that might cap you off if you're doing some larger projects. Another update is the ability to now load 12 sends per channel. The previous limit was eight. So typically I'm not using more than four or five sends on a channel, but for synthesis and sound design ideas, where you have a source signal going to lots of different effect sends and you're blending all these effects together, this can really be helpful. The biggest update for me is the addition of the new Deesser 2 plugin. You can see here it's called Deesser 2, not just Deesser. So the important thing to remember is that it's not just the old Deesser with the new interface. It's actually a brand new updated plugin. To be honest, Logic's old Deesser sucked. It would DS things that didn't need to be DSed, and it wouldn't DS other things that needed to be DSed. It was really clunky to work with. So if you don't know what a de-esser is, it's a fast acting compressor that only acts on high frequencies to reduce sibilance or S and S consonants that are usually in vocal recordings. But they can also be used for hi-hat smoothing and even smoothing out the high end on masters. The threshold control is the volume level at which the signal will be attenuated. The max reduction is the maximum amount of reduction that'll be applied when the signal passes the threshold. And the frequency is the frequency filter where the sibilance is detected at. So you're going to use all three of these knobs to identify where the sibilance is, set where the threshold of reduction is, and then also set the amount of reduction. Typically, most sibilance happens around 6 kHz or higher. Now, for the detection frequency, you can filter this as a high shelf or a band. So if you want to attenuate at a frequency and everything above it, use the shelf option. If you just want to attenuate at a band around the frequency, use the band option. Filter solo solos just the frequency and band that you selected. So you can hone in on the frequency that you want to attenuate. There's two range options, split and wide. These affect the filter frequency range. Split affects signals pretty tightly around the filter frequency, so it's a more narrow reduction and wide sets a broader range of frequencies centered around the filter frequency. I'll do a quick demonstration on reducing some sibilance in a vocal recording. Touch it, so where did you go? It's getting late, and you're still not home. Touch it, so where did you go? 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 Touch it, so where did you go?
Touch it so where did you go? Touch it so where did you go? Another minor update is you can now drag multiple loops from the loop browser simultaneously, and you can also sort your loops by type by clicking here. So if you just want to see drummer loops, I can just select drummer loops here. There's also a dynamic plugin loading option. This only loads plugins needed for project playback. You can find this under File, Project Settings, General. So here I've got a project template that I used for tracking a full band. I'm not using all of the channels because I haven't recorded anything yet, so there's no need to load all of the plugins. So with this dynamic plugin loading on, I can close this project and reload it. Now with this open back up, you'll see that if there's no audio or MIDI data on a channel and the channel hasn't been selected, it will not load the plugins on those channels. If I select a channel to record to it, or if I import audio or MIDI to it, the plugins will be loaded. So this is a nice way to save processing power for tracking, especially if you're working from a template like this. One thing I like to do in Logic is customize my key commands. So I'll go up to Logic Pro 10, Key Commands, Edit. Now, customizing key commands in Logic isn't a new thing. I did a video on this a long time ago, but they added this pressed button, which allows you to press and hold the key combination, and it'll show you all of the shortcuts associated with that key command. So keep in mind, some key combinations are used multiple times for multiple areas within Logic. This pressed button can be helpful if you're looking for an available key combination that's not used yet. So let's say I'm looking for an available key command that includes S on the keyboard. Command S is obviously taken, that's just save. Control S is taken. Shift Control S is taken. Shift Option S is taken. Let me try Shift Control Command S. Yeah, so that one's available. So this is a quick way to find available key combinations. Lastly, the 10.4.5 update also improves the responsiveness in the mixer when working on larger sessions. So I was working with this update quite a bit yesterday. I was mixing a larger session and it's definitely a bit snappier than it was before the update. It also improves the performance of sessions with a lot of flex time edits and tempo changes. I haven't seen that improvement yet. I just haven't been working with flex time much since the update. And it's obviously also been optimized for the new Mac Pro with up to 56 processing threads if you get the completely maxed out 28 core version. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. If you'd like to make a monthly donation to the channel, you can also check me out at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. As always, thanks for the support, and thanks for watching.